film, guys, it's it's an incredible achievement. Um, Richard, I just wanted to know, um, first and foremost, foremost um, why did you decide to do the 3D format for the story? Why did you think that well, was? I mean, I. I I believe it's it really is the future. I mean, I, it's a bit like when black and white went to colour. Um, you know, I think you're going to see a huge explosion in 3D and 3D TV. But it's a wonderful medium to work in. A lot of the technical problems we had in the past are, are being solved, and it's more comfortable to watch. We can use it in a subtle way. But essentially, what it does is it gives people a real feeling, a texture of being there. You know, some of the shots we had show the proximity of how these fans can get close to the racetrack. So some of the shots you'll see the blades of grass blow as the bike goes past and you can almost reach out and touch the grass. And we wanted to give that feeling of, you know, when you go to the TT, you're not in a stadium miles back. That's how close you can get to these guys. And that's why this, the excitement of watching the sport is amazing because, you know, they're whipping past you at 160 miles an hour and that's how close you are. And the 3D allowed us to kind of show that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's got a real cinematic look and feel to it as well. Mm. I mean, how easy was that to achieve for like a documentary? It was incredibly tough. I mean, I think uh, Steve and, and Mark had touched on it. We, we had to go out and chase the story, and documentary filmmakers normally pick up the cameras, run around, and just don't put them down from being, you know, from first up light to the lights down and onwards. With 3D, that's really difficult. You know, setting up these cameras takes 45 minutes to an hour to align them, to get all the correct convergence and interactions correct. Technically, they don't like being thrown around, but we threw them around as much as you could. You know, we did the first kind of handheld 3D. We pioneered rigs. Um, one of our carbon rigs was one of the only two that they had in, in development. So, a lot of pioneering stuff, and, and and quite tricky to kind of shoot a documentary in 3D. And it did create quite a few, you know, challenges from post-production later on down the line. But we kept true to the story, and and then that's what was important. Cool. I mean, Ian, you're, you were obviously like the big chump that year. And did you feel any kind of added pressure on you with the, with the cameras like, kind of sticking? Uh, no, to be honest, I didn't do a lot of filming to, until towards the end of the, uh, the week. So, um, you know, it's, it's been building up a little bit more and more with their publicity over on the island and, you know, people doing filming of various sorts over the years. And the TV coverage is getting a lot bigger over there now. So. You know, we've been doing a lot of stuff for TV anyway out there, so if it's, uh, you've just got to choose a time and a place to do it really and not let it get involved with the racing. Yeah, true. Um, I mean, what were your initial thoughts behind the project when you were approached by Richard? I mean, you can't decide you were going to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was never really one that was that bothered about it, but I've seen, you know, a lot of people come across and say, oh, we're doing this about this, and. You know, I never realised it's hard for them guys to put across what they were going to do, you know. Someone tells you they're going to make a film that's coming out of the cinemas and like, yeah, whatever. And, you know, and uh, to be honest, it, it, get, getting results is all I'm bothered about in motorbike racing. So anything that takes, you know, my mind or time away from what I'm there to do, um, you know, takes a bit of, you know, getting me to do. <laughs> And uh, that was where I was at, really. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't really bothered about spending any time looking into a camera and trying to do anything for anybody else. I was there to win TT, so. But uh, you know, we made it work around us a little bit, and you know, I think uh, in the end, you know, they've done a great job and proved me wrong. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, the film itself, it's like kind of, it's as thrilling as any kind of big Hollywood kind of action film. I mean, are you? <laughs> Are you interested in sort of feature? Been feeling any kind of offers since the film came out? In um, terms of like yeah, I've, I have been. I have actually um, got a couple of scripts that have been sent to me. I mean, I, I, I was my target was to shoot full length feature films, and uh, I still hope to to shoot some full length feature films. Although I have to say, having done feature documentary format, uh, it, it's inspiring, and I'm I'm quite keen to to also maybe do some more feature documentaries. Um, True life stories are, are, are very compelling, and a, a lot of our crew and a lot of our team came from the feature film world, and I think they were all amazed about how exciting it was to follow a real story, a story that every day was changing in front of us, and a story that, in a way, you know, you do your best to document it. You have story strands that you're following, but at the end of the day, who, who, how could we tell what was going to happen at the end of the race week? You know, so that was very exciting, and and I'm, you know, be keen to look at both formats. Great, great. Uh, I really like the inclusion of Jared Leto's voiceover as well. I think mm. it adds another dimension to the film. I mean, how did you get involved in it? Well, well, Jared was, was approached by Steve, and um, as you can imagine, he's, he's the kind of man who 
you know, gets a lot of offers and, you know, can, doesn't, I think he was just inspired by the film. He saw the film and he thought, you know what, I, know, I like this and I'm going to put my voice to it. And um, he's, he's, he's a good choice because he's very understated and what he does do is, you know, we are looking at the wider audiences and he definitely has a huge following in America and around the rest of Europe. So I think he, you know, he's already twittering about it and he'll bring, a, hopefully, a, a lot of fans to the film as well. Okay, Richard, thank you very much. No problem.